Hey kayak fishing enthusiasts. A little over a month ago I posted a video on how I personalized my kayak fishing crate. And during the video I provided just a rough overview on how I made my rod holders and my navigation light warning flag. And I promised that I'd come back later and give you a little more detail on how I made each of those. So today I'd like to do is focus on the navigation light and, and uh, warning flag. And I, I really put these together basically with the assistance of my grandson Tyler and my wife. So with that, let's just go into the shop and start going into a little more detail. Thank you. Well, those of you who haven't looked at my previous video, this is my navigation light and warning flag. It's made from a, a fiberglass uh, driveway marker. There's some flotation. Uh, the flag, this is made out of a polyester cotton blend. It's a polyester blend because it's used, because it'll uh, dry easily if it gets wet. And of course, if you're a kayak, it's going to get wet. And then also a device to hold the flashlight. And this is just a simple pill bottle that lights up after it's turned on here. This LED light. I'll give you a little more detail in a few minutes. I have to say there's some great products out there. Unfortunately, they're a little expensive. You can spend anywhere from $70 to over $100 for those. Now, this outfit here that I'm showing here, all the materials and everything is less than $15. So, and again, whenever you're kayaking, uh, half of the fun is building things. You know, particularly in the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing in my shop, uh, modifying my crate, and uh, customizing my kayak as well. It just gives you something to do. So anyway, let's go into some more detail. Here are just some of the items that are gonna be needed to make the DIY navigation light and warning flag. I'm gonna put more detailed information at the end of this video, including a link to where some of these items can be purchased. This is something I talked about before, but this is the flag. And it's basically made of a uh, blaze orange polyester cotton blend. This material is, is great because if it gets wet in the kayak, it dries quickly. What my wife did is designed it. She cut out a section of the material, folded it over, seamed it all the way around here. And then she put a little, a little pocket in here. And in there, we took a section of this plastic coat hanger, cut it, slipped it in here and then she put uh, stitched it in place on both sides so it keeps in place and this keeps the flag from from crunching down then she put another sleeve on this end and this she left open and this is large enough that you can slide it right over top of that fiberglass rod one of the first things we're going to do is build the bracket to hold the flashlight on the safety pole i've determined what we need for the particular one that i'm building is one and three quarter inch strip. I'm going to mark the one and three quarter inch. The next thing I did was locate the position for the center of the hole. And this would be the one inch hole that would be used to hold the flashlight. I've added a half inch on the front here. Now, because this is a poly board, it's a little flexible. So my plan is to drill a hole here. That's a one inch in diameter. That's for the, for the flashlight. And then here, I'll put another hole. And this will be a 5 16 inch hole. And this will be the one that's used to secure the, the block and the flashlight to the pole. After that's done, then I'm going to take my table saw and I'll rip it right up to here. And I'll create a small gap. And then I'll run a... Uh, wing nut and a bolt through here and then when I put the flashlight in and put this on the pole I'll just uh, put some pressure and tighten the wing nut and that'll hold it in place. So with that I'm going to drill the pole then. Okay next I'm going to drill the 5 16 inch hole for the for the uh, pole to attach. Now I prefer to use a drill press because I just have a little bit better control on the drilling and make sure everything is perpendicular. Clearly this is my least favorite step. Please excuse the sound. Well, 
well, you notice that I stopped just shy of going all the way through here, and that's to prevent from cutting into the support in the back. Uh, otherwise, that round blade would cut through up here too. So I'm just cut this last section, section with a handsaw. Okay, for this step, I'm gonna use my favorite hand tool or handsaw. And this is a little Japanese finishing saw I bought years ago. It works great. Okay, last but not least is the hole that'll be used to insert the bolt and wing nut to secure the bracket to the pole. Again, this is a five C inch hole. And here we go. Nothing fancy, but just a little bit of a round edge. Now let's assemble the flag. Start with the flag and then grab the driveway marker, slide it in, and then next, Take the 5 16th inch shaft collar and slide it down. Now you may notice some marks here. I actually predetermined where I want these to go. And then use this to tighten the Allen set screw. And then next, slide on another 5 16th inch shaft collar. And again, give a little space here so that you want to make sure that this uh, flag can move, move easily. You want a little bit of play in here. And then next, I want to slide on a large, and this is an inch and a half fender washer. This is also stainless. And next, I'm going to slide on the flotation. And the flotation is nothing more than half inch foam pipe insulation. This is an idea that my son-in-law came up with. And the reason he came up with this idea is the first time my son-in-law or my grandson and I were out fishing at night, uh, he had the flag set up, the light on, and was making a cast, and his hook happened to catch the flag, and he launched the flag right into uh, a lake in Northern Dane County, and that's where it stayed. So this is such a good idea. Again, another add another fender washer, and then the last shaft collar. That's it. Now it's all it needs to do is assemble the light. Next we want to do is, is uh, look at a couple possible ways that uh, you could use to secure the flashlight or the light to the top of the pole. This is an item that my grandson designed and printed on his 3D printer. And again, it's a flexible plastic. The flashlight slides through here, and there's a hole at the bottom that you can use to turn the flashlight on and off. And then the diffuser, again, a couple of different approaches, a toothbrush holder, uh, you can use some other more translucent materials. I found that this simple Tylenol bottle worked great. Just slides on the top, and what you can do if you'd like, you can attach that with a little bit of electric tape just to make sure it doesn't come off in the kayak. Now it's probably not necessary, but um, uh, I tend to be a little bit of overkill. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's it. And then this just slides right on the top here. And that's it. Turn it on like this and you're good to go. So another approach uh, I figured many of you here on, the, on this channel probably wouldn't have access to a grandson that is so talented that he could, he could uh, print the holder. So this is material, and I explained this earlier, this is made out of the, of the trim material, and it's just a little wing that goes through here. So you have to do is slide on the flashlight, add the, the, the diffuser, and again, this can be taped if you'd like. This goes over the pole here, slides down to the, to the uh, shaft collar, and it's just a matter of tightening this wing nut, and we're good to go. Next, we have to figure out how to attach the flag to the crate. A couple options here. This, is, again, is uh, my grandson's device here. It's basically something he's printed in a 3D printer and it includes a bracket like this and two pieces that bolt in the back to hold it in place. Let me show you quickly how that's done. 
Okay, this is my grandson's crate. It's a work in progress. It's a little dirty, but uh, it's been used, which is a good thing. So the device he printed here, he um, took another piece of plastic that he printed to match the opening here. This goes in here, and then these two pieces go in back to secure it in place. And then, of course, the flag goes on top, and there's a set screw to hold it, hold it in place. Okay, this is another approach, and this one I made using the 1x4 poly, uh, poly trim board, and I cut it down to an inch and a half, and again, what I did is I took and cut out a piece of, of um, deck trim, and I set that back in here so it would fill up this opening, and then I mounted this in place, uh, secured it in back with a, a couple of, of aluminum strips and uh, screws, and so... This hole is drilled all the way through, it's a 5 16 inch hole, and this one is drilled halfway down. So the pole or the rod will slide in and secure in place with this, uh, this set screw. And again, I drilled this hole slightly smaller than the diameter of the screw, and I was able to basically self thread it in place, and this works great. Now, I'm using this approach so it kind of offsets a little bit, and that's because I have a lid in my kayak crate. I want to make sure it's offset enough that it doesn't interfere. And this works fine. Of course, my first choice is to use my grandson, have him print one, but I know that a lot of you folks out there don't have access to someone that has a 3D printer and the design software. Okay, this is another option. Uh, what I did is I, I bought some crates from, from Menards, and this is one that I'm just kind of experimenting with. This is a heavy duty. The one I have and the one my grandson has are pretty light duty weight. So what I wanted to do is t find something that I could, could uh, make from scratch that's readily available. And I'm going to assemble this, and I'm going to be putting my rod holders on here as well. This is kind of a simple approach. This is a half-inch CPVC pipe. It's available from almost any, any uh, home specialty store. This one came from Menards. It's also available at Home Depot. Cap on the bottom that's secured in place by gluing. And then we have uh, two uh, pipe clamps. And these are polypropylene that are available, again, from most stores. And the reason I have this use this approach is it sets out away from the top. I'm going to be putting a top on here similar to the one that I had on mine. And it has to be offset slightly so you can operate the, the lid without interfering with the flag. So in order to get this to fit, I took some 3 8 inch, this is um, material is deck trim, it's, it's a composite wood plastic material, and I put that in the spaces here to bring it flush, and then I put two stainless steel bolts in here, and attach those in the back with just, just bolts, these are uh, one inch I believe, and it's secured in place. Pretty simple, and the same approach using a thumb screw, and again, this is a little bit more flexible, so depending on the size diameter of, of, uh, of um, driveway mark you use, this, this may work fine. Well, that's it in my video today. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, below the video, I'm going to put links to the Wisconsin Boating Regulations, the United States Coast Guard Navigation Rules, as well as the link to, to Kayak Hex Fishing video on on navigation lights he does an absolutely great job of explaining the rules i also like to warn you to make sure you check your local and state regulations to make sure that what we're presenting here and that's presented in the, in the navigation rules matches what's required for your particular state so thanks for watching if you have any comments and questions please post them in the comments section uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this please hit the subscribe button also, I plan to have some more videos coming out shortly. One will be on how I built the, the rod holders, and I've made a few changes since uh, I originally made this post. I'm also going to, to talk a little bit about environmental issues in Wisconsin. Uh, these are not going to be politically hot items. These are things that are just general information. So, uh, again, uh, I look forward to hearing from you if you have comments, and otherwise, I'll see you next time.